All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. Tonight, I got a new machine I want to show you guys. Uh, been kind of anticipating this machine. It is a 22 watt machine, and some of you may be familiar with the company. They more or less are known for their 3D printers. Uh, it is a Creality Falcon 2. Uh, now, I had never seen or heard a whole lot about the Falcon series or Falcon 2 or any Creality laser for that matter. Uh, until the company reached out to me and they asked me if I wanted to try the machine out and I figured, you know I've heard a lot of good things about their 3d printers. So, you know, why not a laser a lot of the same mechanics a lot of the same, you know Design principles are involved. So I figured, you know, what the heck? So tonight I've got one I'm gonna walk you through show you some of the things about the machine There's a few things that I'm not crazy about There's a lot of things that I do like and I'm gonna show you some of the capabilities of the machine so if that's something you're into, guys, stick around. All right, guys, so I'm going to sit here for a second. I want to go over a few things, and I'll kind of bring you around, and I'm going to work in some video to show you uh, what, I'm gonna work in, what, I'm, what I'm talking about. Uh, so there'll be a little, you know, I'll get you a little closer over here in the little small screen uh, during the video. But I want to kind of just point out some things to you uh, about this machine that are, are unique. Uh, it has some features that I have not seen on other machines. We're going to start right here on this corner. I'm just going to walk you around it, and then we're going to end up here at the, the middle of the machine where the laser head is. Okay, the first thing that I want to point out to you on this machine is it is very unique from any other machine that I have tried in the fact that the power for the air... So assist pump is actually on the front of the machine. And, you know, why is that, you might ask? Well, it's because the air assist is controlled by the chassis of the machine, by the machine itself. Yes, guys, this machine is 100% air assist is operable from light burn. Uh, I've played around with it. I've tested it. I uh, did some cutting with it last night, some engraving. Uh, the little switch that's in light burn where you can enable or disable the air assist works with this guy. So, All right, guys, so starting right here on this left corner, uh, this is the variable power for the air assist. This is actually the power wire that feeds the air assist. So you, you only have one brick, one power supply that connects to this machine. The power from the air, the air assist comes from the machine itself, and that little roller right there is how you increase or decrease the amount of flow from the air assist. Okay, as you move over here, it does have the, uh, the lockout switch on it in case you decide you want to lock the machine when you leave home or, you know, you got kids laying around that, that could mess with it. Or I guess another situation would maybe be if you're cleaning the machine and you just want to make sure it doesn't power up while you're cleaning it. I mean, you know, use your imagination. It also has the e-stop button. This thing right here, if you press it in, it, it blocks the machine from powering up. You have to twist it and it'll pop up like most of the other machines that you know on the market when you twist it it pops up it actually allows the machine to come on and there's the machine on emergency stop machine goes off so this control panel the only function that will work that i have found that will work with light burn uh, these other buttons those are pretty much seem to be only operational during tf card operation but the home button will work even if you're using light burn, you can home the machine from here by pressing the button. Uh, this is going to be where the TF card is located. You got a USB port, power outlet, or power input, and then the little switch right here. This is the master power switch. Um, moving around, guys, I want to point out to you that this thing has like cable management like no other. You can see that the cables are in these little metal clips, and these actually have screws attaching them to the frame. So no more zip ties, no more sticky adhesive that pulls off when it gets hot. Uh, they have fixed that problem. And look at how clean the, 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 the construction, guys, the detail that they paid, the, the way that they have put metal straps on the cabling. I mean, they got my respect on that. That's for sure. And you got four of these little guys. That's the limit switch. Okay, there's one there. And if you look... There's also, let me get moved around here, guys. 
there's a limit switch on that side of the gantry, right there beside that uh, stepper motor. And there's another one on this side, okay? And there's another one right here in the back. So you've got limit switches at all four corners. That's pretty neat. Uh, the way that this works, this ensures that you have a clean turn right here with the cabling. There's not any of that bunching or anything like that going on here. So I do really like that. Uh, the back of the machine, there's a place here, and uh, I believe that is going to be for the camera, for an overhead camera for light burn. Uh, the holes are already drilled, so there's no C-clamps or brackets or anything like that. It looks like it'll be a straight bolt-on uh, mod there. So the machine is it's a solid machine. One other difference is I noticed that the stepper is in the middle. It has a rod going to each side. But keep in mind, guys, this thing was already put together when I got it. Okay, I didn't have to put any of that together. Up here on the head, you'll notice the indicators. Uh, the one thing that I'm not crazy about, and they actually uh, claim that this is a selling point, is that this shield comes all the way down and makes it really, really safe uh, so that it doesn't hurt your eyes. Now, me, it kind of gets in my way. Just going to throw that out there. Uh, but so far, I haven't had any problems with it. It is not removable. Uh, you can't take that off. Uh, sort of... Uh, modifying the head but the good news is if you get yourself cut with this laser you've done something really bad so i mean that's a plus and there's no air assist elbow here here or here the air assist comes straight in through the top right here guys and comes straight out through the bottom and let me show you what the inside looks like there's the nozzle and if above the nozzle you'll see that little Looks almost like one of those little ATM camera windows, so I'm guessing there's some type of optical sensor under there. Um, that may be very well the lens that that little warning indicator is talking about. Uh, and then you got the air assist nozzle that just kind of protrudes out right there. Uh, so the air is not coming in from the side; it's coming from directly, you know, with the laser beam. So that's gonna, I think that's gonna work really well. Uh, the air assist and the cutting ability of this machine so far. Oh, uh, has definitely impressed me. After two days of testing, uh, I've, I've learned a lot about this machine. And like I said, some of these videos, I'm just kind of putting them together over the past two days. But uh, I have uh, found out that these three indicators on the uh, laser head, one is to let you know that you have insufficient airflow, which I'm guessing means the air assist because it turns green when the air assist is on. Uh, the second light that says fire is exactly what I thought it was. It's a uh, fire sensor uh, to let you know that there may or may not be a fire. Uh, it pretty much has been staying on when I've been doing some of this heavy cutting. Uh, so the good news is it doesn't affect the way the machine performs in light burn. It doesn't throw a code as long as they're disabled. And there is a user manual and some, some documentation that's on the little uh, card there that will tell you how to enable or disable that. Uh, the third indicator is the lens, and it is supposed to let you know if the lens gets dirty and needs to be cleaned. I still would recommend just routinely doing some maintenance on the machine. I am getting it to cut three quarter inch plywood, which is kind of amazing. Uh, it doesn't always give me a clean drop, but pretty much I'm getting, I'm getting pretty consistent cuts uh, running this stuff here at six passes at seven millimeters a second. Uh, it's dropping, it's dropping this, uh, this is close to half inch material here. It's dropping it in two to three passes. Uh, now this is uh, cypress, it's a little softer wood, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with it. And I, like I said, I'm just gonna show you a cut or two. Uh, I have been playing with it and uh, just kind of doing some testing to see and kind of running through the paces to see if I can get it to, to, to have any issues. So I'm gonna home it using the button on the machine. I do like that feature, I think that's cool. That way you can make sure it's home before you walk away. Uh, and then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna frame this out with a circle frame. Move that up near my little circle farm I got going. And I've got this set at seven millimeters a second and I'm gonna run it three passes. The automatic air assist is, is, is a really cool feature. Uh, I do like that so far because you don't have to like turn it off and turn it on, turn it off and turn it on uh, between jobs or between burns. Uh, that's that's kind of neat. That is cool. Uh, it's a bit of a time saver. 
when it comes to being able to, you know, having to reach over and turn it off and then forgetting to turn it back on and that type of thing. So that was the three passes at seven millimeters a second. And as you can see, uh, it, it, it stayed there. So that's a clean drop, uh, fell right out. Now the piece is very warm, uh, but I'll show you the cut. This is the cut. This machine cuts a lot better than I'd anticipated. And I'm not getting, I'm not getting, even, even this thick of material. And let me get my mic out and I'll, uh, my caliber, and I will tell you exactly how thick this is. Uh, this is, this is kind of ridiculously thick to be trying to cut with a laser. But, you know, you guys like to be able to see this kind of stuff. So, there you go. 12 millimeters thick. Uh, like I said, this is cypress, so it's not really a real dense material. Uh, but it is a very... A very good wood for uh, cutting out things. It's, it's kind of weather tolerant. All right, this is the material I made my enclosures out of. All right, this is three quarter inch plywood. It's 17.7 uh, millimeters or 0.69 inches thick. Uh, it's basically like it, they, they sell it as three quarter inch grade, uh, three quarter inch uh, cabinet grade material. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on here. Now I am gonna have to refocus because this is a lot thicker material. Uh, and now that I have tightened the, uh, the little roller there, I'm getting a lot more consistency with my, my focus adjustment too. And since this is such a thick material, I'm going to use the very last step that they have, which is technically for, you know, six millimeter, but you know, we're not too much over six millimeter and I'm going to tighten both of the screws cause it is kind of up there in the air. And I'm going to home it here on the machine. All right, so I'm going to change my number of passes on this one because I know it's hit or miss with six passes, but with seven, I'm getting some pretty consistent results. So I'm going to put that right there, and I'm going to go ahead and start it. Uh, with seven passes, I'm getting some pretty good consistency as far as getting the cut to go all the way through. Uh, it will do it at six, but it's, it, it hangs a little more from time to time. So I've been running it at seven. I'm really impressed with the 22 watt module that they put on this machine. And I do know that it is, it, it is also available with a 33 watt, which would be very interesting after seeing what this 22 watt is capable of. Now, like I said, cutting this thick of material with a diode laser is not something that I would recommend doing a lot of or doing it on a regular basis, but it is kind of, it is kind of fun sometimes just to flex. I said, I've got this set to seven passes. So it's quite a few passes. And you can see that it's getting a little, getting a little like snags on the back it's very warm but you can you can press it out now this is plywood so i could run this same power setting over here and probably not have those same snags because you got to consider this this has got one what is this seven layers you've got four of the dark layers and three of the light layers so that's seven layers of material which equals to you know a lot of glue in between those layers so so you're going to get very inconsistent burns with something this thick, but for it to be able to even make it through it, in my opinion, is pretty impressive. Uh, I just did that just to, just to give you an idea. All right, guys, so the next test I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same image that I've done with the other machines. I'm going to run it on this guy and uh, on the same material and see how it stacks up. All right, guys, so I got the... Uh, the image file burned and just going to kind of walk you through here. Uh, this was the one I did with my Comgro Otour combination. Uh, this is the X tool, the 20 watt D1. And then this is the one I just did with uh, this machine, uh, the Creality. So it's pretty, uh, <laughs> it's really, really close to the identical of, uh, effect. I ran the power settings pretty close. Uh, and, uh, 
it's it's this one's a little hotter it looks like and i think that has something to do with the way that this machine uh focuses and moves because you notice it's right near the edge it just seems like it got a little darker but all together uh, that's a really good job on an image i could have probably made it just a little bit bigger so it would be the same size as these but uh, good image quality. Uh, I'm really looking forward to doing a project with it. But for now, I just want to get some testing out and kind of introduce you guys to this machine. All right, guys. So that's my preliminary uh, review to this point so far. And uh, it's a little early to call still, but it's, it's doing a good job. Uh, I will be using it on some more, you know, just testing and, and some more jobs and work. Uh, this week to try to just run it through the paces so I can give you an honest review and point out any flaws that I've found with the machine so far. Like I said, it's got some pretty advanced features that some of the other machines don't have, and I like those. Uh, the only two complaints or two precautions that I would uh, mention to you is make sure to check all the screws and stuff before you start using the machine. Uh, I did notice that some of the screws, they were all there, they were all in place, but some of them weren't tightened down. Uh, all the way and it had a little slop in the machine needed a, just a little bit of adjustment so i mean that's not terrible considering it was already put together uh but that was kind of an oversight on my part i should have checked those when i got it out of the box before i went to using it but then i got to noticing it just had a little bit of slack in it in places and that's when i discovered that it i needed to go around it with an allen wrench and just tighten everything down uh since i've did that i haven't had any problems with it it's I mean, it's running smooth the cable management guys is off the chain uh, I really do like that. Uh, the automatic air assist, a bit of a game changer. Uh, like I said, I'm really curious to see what the 33 watt head that comes with this machine uh, will do. Uh, because this machine does come in three different variations, uh, ranging from 11, 22 to 33 watts. And uh, so maybe one day I'll get lucky and can try the uh, 33 watt out. But that's going to be it for tonight, guys. There will be more videos to come with the machine. Uh, I'm going to drop some links down below. Uh, they've asked me to put in the video if you're interested in looking at the machine. Uh, it is, like I said, it's in the 20 watt class, the power output, the cutting ability, the engraving ability. It's, it's, it's running up there with most of the machines on the market that I've dealt with in the 20 watt class. Uh, and it's doing a pretty good job. So, so far so good. But don't forget Sunday Night Lives, 7 p.m., me and Steve over at Ventari's workshop. We're going to be sitting around talking lasers. And hopefully this weekend, guys, I've got a trencher and a roll of the best cat six cable i could find coming and i'm going to be laying some cat cat six cable from here to the house and hopefully my internet woes will be a thing of the past this weekend so sunday maybe y'all can see the shack live and not you know looking like a uh, old atari video game guys but if you hadn't already be sure to hit the subscribe button i appreciate the support for the channel uh it's you guys that help keep things moving and help keep machines coming for testing and evaluating uh, I try to sh share my honest opinion with you guys because uh, I know when I was in the market to get my first laser, it was one of those things of, you know, I, I don't want to hear all the good. <laughs> you know, I want to hear, hear an honest opinion. And so that's what I try to give you guys. And I appreciate you supporting the channel and uh, making this possible. So if you hadn't already, go hit the, the subscribe button, go to my Facebook page and hit that follow. And we also have the Laser Engraver community group that's over on Facebook that a lot of the guys from the Sunday Night Live will be in there and sharing projects and sharing stories. So go check that out. But until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.